The bank gets these IOUs. And when they get them back, they have a bunch of these IOUs. But really, the bank does not want that monthly payment. They don't want that $555 a month for 30 years. They actually want their money back. So what they do is they take that loan. And remember, we've talked about the fact that that loan has an interest rate. That interest rate makes that loan valuable. They've loaned out 100000 but if they hold it over the course of 30 years, they will get back 200000 That is the example I showed you several days ago, or several chapters ago, depending on how quick you're doing this. But they don't want to hold it 30 years because they don't have the ability to service it for 30 years. So what they want to do is sell that loan to the secondary mortgage market. The secondary mortgage market are people who buy these loans. Now, there is a big theoretical difference, and theoretical is not the, the word I want to use. There is a big difference between cash and cash flow. And maybe that's important you understand. There is a difference between having physical bundle of cash and getting a reoccurring income. In class, I always ask this question. Would you rather have $90 today or let me give you $10 a month for the next 12 months? Which one do you want? Those are two completely different concepts. Now, if you'll notice, there are also two different values, $90 today. But if you wait for a year, you're going to collect $120. Which do you want? And the answer to that is, there is no answer. Because half of you may want the $90 today, and half of you may want that reoccurring income over the next 12 months of $10 a month. This is the concept here that's going on between the primary market and the secondary market, right? The primary market starts with 100 grand. They convert it into $555 a month for the next 30 years through the loan. Now what they have got is this mortgage and this IOU, but they don't want $555 a month. They want their money back. So they turn around and they find a person who wants $555 a month for the next 360 months, and they're willing to pay for that in the form of paying more than the hundred grand, but less than the 200 in that example. So that primary mortgage market will turn to somebody and go, hey, dude, here's this piece of paper. If you hold it for 30 years, it's worth $200,000 to you. Would you buy it from me for, let's say, one hundred and twenty grand? And that person goes, well, yeah, because I'll make eighty grand over the next 30 years. I will buy it from you. That is the secondary market. So the primary market sells the note. But remember, that's the bark. They want the bite, which is the mortgage. So the primary market sells the note and assigns the mortgage to go with it so that that secondary mortgage market person now has both documents. They have the note and the, and the mortgage. And the lender is out. And what they did was they took Jed Clampett's $100,000. Jed put it in the bank and said, give me 3 or 4%. They loaned it out to you through uh, a mortgage. You signed the IOU, gave it back to the primary mortgage market. They sold it on the secondary mortgage market and made a profit. So now they take back 110000 
And what they do is they turn around to their investor and go, here's your $100,000 back plus the interest we earned. And the lender says, great, do it again. Do it again. All right. And that, my friends, is the cycle of how the primary mortgage market collects uh, the IOU and then sells it to the another secondary mortgage market. And they sell it so they can get their money back and do it again for the investor. The secondary mortgage market are the people that have the ability to service that loan. This is the business they're in. Hey, we want that $555 a month, and we will do this a thousand times a day. And the lender who has all these IOUs they've collected for all the money they loaned out will pool these together, and they will pool them in groups. And they may put all of the people with a 700 credit score together in a group and sell that, and the slang is A paper. You don't need to know that for the exam, but just for your knowledge. Because they are the A borrowers. You know, good income, have a lot of money in the bank. They are the least risky of the group. So they may sell a group of A paper to one secondary market. Then they may put a group of B paper. These are the people that maybe have a lower credit score, didn't have as much cash in the bank. They are a little more risky. And there are companies out there that love that risk. So they may sell this group or pool, or another word you will often hear it called is a tranche. They will sell a thousand of these that are A paper to that person. And they may sell a thousand of these that are B paper to another company. And the risk is obviously higher with the B paper. So the B paper may get a little more break on the price because they are taking a risk. All right. So what happens? Primary sells it, gets their money back, and then they start all over again. Okay. And that is called the circle of life. No, wait, that's the Disney movie. This is called the financial services between the primary mortgage market and the secondary mortgage market. Now, here's a little thing that's kind of funny. You guys can actually buy these loans. There is no rule in the world that it has to be one of these huge companies that you know about. They The primary mortgage market doesn't care. If you have the money and you have the ability and the wherewithal and the manpower to do all the backroom admin stuff, they don't care. You can actually buy loans on the secondary mortgage. There are uh, secondary mortgage markets. There's websites out there. Go out there and look. Uh, Buying loans. And a lot of these lenders, like I say, will tell you, Hey, this loan is current. They have paid two years. They have good credit. You may pay a little bit more for that because there's less risk. Then there are loans. You can actually buy non-performing loans. People are already in trouble. Well, you might be able to buy those loans for pennies on the dollar. And a lot of times, that's what you see with those people that call you and go, Hey, you borrowed money at Rent-A-Center and you got behind and now we're here to collect That is a third-party company that bought that note, and that's their whole business model, is they hire that call center to call you, and you must understand that that person probably bought that note at below market value. And they're just trying to get some of their money back, all right? That was a little offshoot, and we got a little carried away. But that's what the secondary market is. Now, There are a couple of GSEs, the government-sponsored enterprises, that are big, big players on the secondary market. Probably, I would venture to say anywhere between 90 to 95% of all the loans, and I don't know if that number is 100% correct, 
these three GSEs buy most of the primary loans from or from the primary, and they are considered secondary lenders. And I am sure you have heard of them. You have got Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and uh, Jenny Mae, and Bernie Mac, and Chili Mac, and Big Mac. No, wait, those aren't the ones. But you have Fannie Mae. Fannie Mae loves these things called FHA and VA and these terms conventional loans. That's what they like to buy. Now, you don't know those terms yet because we haven't got to them. But understand. And here they go. They buy blocks or pools of these mortgages and are these IOUs and they use the mortgage as the collateral. And that is called a mortgage backed security, right? The security is the IOU and it is mortgage backed. And they buy all of these on the open market. Freddie Mac is another one. Freddie Mac. They like the mortgage-backed securities just like Fannie Mae does. There is one called Jenny Mae. Jenny Mae. It is what uses a special assistance program because what it does is it guarantees the return to that investor by using a thing called a pass-through certificate. This provides the security interest. They guarantee that return through a pass-through uh, certificate. There's another one that some of you may not have heard of yet. It is called Farmer Mac, believe it or not. It is mainly designed for agricultural loans and rural loans. So, and they are actually created by the USDA, okay? So you have these four government-sponsored entities, which are the big players on the secondary market. But like I said, you could do it as well as you want. And there are other private companies out there that do this. The big four, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Jenny Mae, and Farmer Mac, are the government-sponsored entities. Now, when it comes to the actual loan itself, let's talk a little bit more. And we've touched on this because we had to do it earlier, but we're going to go through it again, is the first thing that all lenders want to talk about is this ratio of the loan to value, all right? It's the ratio of the loan amount as compared to the value of the property. Now, here's an important thing you need to understand. The word value actually has a tricky definition. Value means this. It's the appraised value that the bank will get when they send their appraiser out or the purchase price of the property, whichever is the lower of the two, make sure you understand what I just said. It is the appraised value of the property according to the appraiser or the purchase price that the buyer and seller have agreed to, whichever is the lower of the two. The lower of the two gives the bank the most protection. So, an example, let's say there's a house for sale for $100,000. You write an offer for $100,000. The bank says, okay, they send their appraiser out, and the bank, the appraiser comes in at $100,000. The bank would be happy with this. Now, they're not exceptionally happy, but at least this. In this case, they are going to use the appraised value. But now let's change the story. Let's say the seller is selling the property for 100000 and you successfully negotiate a purchase price 
of 90. And the bank sends their appraiser out and appraises the property and says, yes, the property is appraised at 100, but you are only buying it for 90. The bank will use this number as the basis for the loan. I know it seems funny. It's the same house. It's the same house you agreed to pay 100 on. They'll use 100. But if you agreed to pay 90, they use the lower of the two. Okay? The lower of the two. Now, I like to draw this picture like this. So let's do this. So what you have is this value on a property. And for the minute, it doesn't matter. Let's just say value. So then you have this loan amount. The ratio of these two is called the loan to value. There is a second portion here. What is this piece here called? It is the amount of value above the outstanding loan. That word is called equity, right? That person would have an equity amount. The equity is defined as the difference between the value and the outstanding loan amount. And the ratio that most lenders love is 80% loan to value. This would be what we call a conventional loan. A conventional loan, by definition, means the bank is going to loan you 80% of the value. So let's go back here and further look at this. So if the bank says, yeah, Raymond, we will give you an 80% loan to value. Well, in this first example, we agreed to buy it for $100,000. And the appraisal came in at $100,000. Therefore, the bank is going to loan me $80,000. Now, scenario number two, I managed to knock him down or talk him down or however you want to look at it to actually sell me the property for $90,000. The bank sends their appraiser out and they say, well, that house is worth a hundred grand, but the bank is only going to use the purchase price because it's the lower of the two. So in the second example, they're going to loan me 80% of the 90. They're only going to loan me $72,000 now. Because the value is defined as that or that, whichever is the lower, all right? So keep that in mind because there is an exam question where it says it was listed at this, it was appraised at this, but it was purchased at this price. Make sure you understand that in that loan to value calculation, that loan or that value amount is actually could be different. It's the appraised value or the purchase price, whichever is lower.